we believe that there's something very precious for the African and the black man and woman in Kwame Nkrumah's ideas, ideology, and philosophy. Okay. Um, but um, uh, as for living up to expectations, you know, don't forget we grew up at a time when Kwame Nkrumah was vilified immediately after the 66 uh, illegal overthrow, sure. even here in Ghana, particularly here, I would say, uh, Nkrumah was vilified. We were told all the bad things about him. He took money, he became very rich, he was a dictator, he did this and that. So actually, it was not easy in that sense. It took some years before he started uh, become, becoming vindicated. Now, of course, as years go by, we appreciate this great leader more and more. So it wasn't like there were always high expectations. And it was a very rough road in okay. many um, um, instances. Our family was uprooted uh, from our familiar surroundings. Sure. Um, we were, let's say, uh, alienated from our culture, uh, from our family. Uh, and that, had, that took its toll on okay. us, of course. Okay. You know? right. So, um, and. Uh, of course, as I grew older and I started wanted to understand what really happened, you know, uh, that encouraged me uh, to read him okay. and, and, and many of the books surrounding, you know, what had happened. All right. And, uh, um, and okay. And when you speak about you're in Kumais by conviction, not because yes. of a name, no. right? But then, and then you also mentioned sentimental values, not because of sentiment, not out of sentiment. Yes. But you stood on the seat of the Jomoro. And yes. a lot of people said you won because of your name, because of sentimental uh, value, because of that attachment. That's why you won. Yes, so and of course, that's what your detractors would say. But uh, everybody knows it's not so easy to win a seat, especially that it was a stronghold of the NDC. So it was the first time a CPP MP or aspirant wins a seat. So it could not have been easy. Uh, we did a lot of work. And my years as MP, I think... Uh, demonstrates that I'm a different kind of MP to those who came before and after me in Jomoro. Um, out of almost 100 communities, 90 communities have benefited from a project, social intervention project. So you're saying you won on merit because you, you, because you, you, uh, you did your work and that's why yes, you won, not because of merit, your father's name? But of course, people are yearning for the coming of many Incrumers. So we do, we do not want to underestimate that as well. People are yearning for that, but not simply because we are um, the biological, or I'm the biological ch uh, child of Kwame Nkrumah, but people are yearning for people who will conduct themselves as Nkrumah did, as we did in Jamoro when I was MP. The Common Fund was carefully carefully distributed and not a password went astray. This is how we managed to do so much. People ask me, how come every community, almost 90 communities benefited? That's because we made sure the common fund where, where, went where Is it, it been, should be. Is it being mismanaged now? I have no idea what's happening, but I'm, I'll make sure that I get back there as the MP of Jomoro to complete all our good works. Yeah, you said I that you we've inspired a team of young, dedicated, strong people who we, we have to leave a legacy for them, you know, however difficult the path is. And then everybody knows what happened in 2012. Clean I'm actually coming to that. That you mentioned that you did such a good job. I mean, you defeated Leo Kwan. Uh, you came in, but at one time after that, the wing commander also won. So if you did so well, why lose the seat? And you cried foul after that. Of course, because we have to speak the truth. And this is what, what our was young the people, truth. The truth was that thousands and thousands of Ivorians were brought in, registered and brought in to vote. Now, how can the votes? the number of votes cast increase by 11,000 between 2008 and 2012. Whereas between 2004 and 2008, the increase was about 500. Now that is illogical. And in fact, I've gained more confidence touring the district now and listening to the stories and people confirming all that. We knew what happened, but this is politics and we know how to 
protect the will of the people uh, this time round. If I didn't do good work in Jumuru, I wouldn't have had the confidence to go back to the people and ask them for another mandate. Well, it's because maybe it's because you've lost your arsenals. I mean, you're a chair, chairperson here. Yeah, you stepped down. You decided to go for the presidential uh, slot. You were not successful. Maybe because you have no choice but My to go back to My arsenals are truth and Nkrumah's development policies. You know, we know what is wrong in this country and we have the solution. Genuine Nkrumah, followers of Kwame Nkrumah, know what is wrong. The way we are managing the economy is wrong and we are confident in that knowledge because other countries, we are guided by what many other countries have done and how they've succeeded, whereas Ghana has failed. Okay. Ghana has failed the ordinary Ghanaian. You know, progress has been reserved to a few. A minute percentage of the population has progressed. Okay. But the majority of the population are experiencing hardships because of our failed economic policies and because of dishonesty. Okay. If you were so convinced and had evidence, why didn't you take the matter to court? Where in uh, yes, we why, decided why did you not okay, there are a number to of prove reasons. A point. There are a number of reasons. One, we didn't want to get embroiled in the NPP and DC um, uh, conflict or petition. That's right. Um, number two, um, I looked at the situation and I thought that, you know, four years, we can always come back for the mandate. It's not the end of the world, politically speaking. And we, it's, it's a time for us to uh, do other things equally important. So we viewed it as not worth our while for a small party to get embroiled in, you know, in a, in a court case. Okay, but that is okay. And also for the unity of the people of the district. I mean, many uh, NPP, NDC supporters I know voted for me. If, it's, if, my, if the votes I got to 2008, 2012 were confined to CPP members, I probably would not have won the seat. Okay. So I wanted to maintain that unity. And okay, all right. And then on the presidential slot, which was recently held, you had about 579, I think, votes. Yes. I've had more, more than 1,200. And then you cry foul. So how about people who say that it's just a... Yeah, your I attitude, no, you're I better have, about yes. defeat. No, you no, don't no, take no, defeat well. bad No, but I'm a strong woman and I believe in the truth, in principles. You see, until we have the courage in our country to speak out, nothing is going to change. When you see something wrong, we have to speak out. Yes, you will be hounded. Yes, people would say you're a bad loser, but time will bear you out. Time will prove or will bring the truth. The truth always comes out. But we have to be fearless. We have to point out any kind of malpractices because this is a democracy. You know, we need to go beyond simply wanting to win at all costs. We have to understand what democracy means. Democracy at the end of the day means, at the end of the, the, the day rather, means that the people must benefit from their choice. The people must have something to be happy about and joyful about, about their choice. And very often, if there are other um, um, inducements that could cloud uh, people's choice because of the harsh conditions we are, most of our people are going through, then at the end you can distort democracy completely. So I am happy I spoke out. I've said what I said. I stand by everything else I said. For the sake of the party, we've decided not to go back to these uh, issues now. But, 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 it's, I would it's a, speak but it's a big dent on, on seventh, your image. It's, on a, it's, a big, it's a big dent on your image because if you come not, out to say that, just, just a moment, of, yes, if you come yes. out to say that, um, for instance, Ivor Green Street paid monies to people uh, and you cannot prove it, that sounds like a bad loser. In fact, that's just confirming that I you don't just don't know how to, to prove take it. it because the whole of our delegates experienced it. We were all there. I don't need to even say much. We were all there. The whole party knows what happened. If for political reasons we've decided to stop talking about it, that's another matter. But I'm not going to be silent forever. I'm going to speak after the 7th of November. What would so, you say so after the 7th? As in when you stand on the seat, uh, on no, the ticket. That's what I'm saying. I'm not speaking now. There are certain things I won't say now. 
So I'm not okay. going to say them now, but I'm going to speak after the 7th of November. Okay. So um, I, I, I put this, when you, when you made that statement, for instance, I put it to the NPP, I think the, the NDC as well, that you know, Mr. Ivo Greenstreet has been mentioned as you know, having to pay for uh, delegates to vote for him. Too. And they said, look, they know Ivo Greenstreet, his integrity is unmatched. He's not somebody who will compromise his authority, so this is just nothing. They, don't, they didn't even want to consider it as something that... No, 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 no but he wants to into. consider it because, yes. unfortunately, unfortunately, if you ask the ordinary Ghanaian in the street, do you believe a politician? They will come back and tell you no. So we are here to make sure that we revolutionize the image of politicians. Okay. I've had people tell me, oh, politicians never speak the truth. We need to change that. How can you put your destiny in the hands of people who you think never speak the truth? There's a contradiction there. So are you saying people who don't speak the truth are going to protect your resources, are going to make sure that you get an equal share, are going to improve, help improve the quality of your life? No. So this is why I'm saying let the truth come out. Let us be courageous because we have to demand from politicians integrity. Look at what the Panama Papers, look at what we are all reading today over the last few days. Okay. How can the ruling elite in different countries, businessmen, politicians, connive together to aid, you know, hiding of big funds that tax havens, big funds, the illicit uh, financial flows, as we yeah, call them, Mark, that are robbing... Fonseca. Yes, Mark, the whole... Mark, Fonseca. Indeed. Okay. The whole continent of Africa loses billions, billions annually sure. from this. Can you imagine if that money had gone into development, education, health, where we would be? So is this speaking the truth? No. So we need to rise up. We need to find that courage. Yes, you'll be hounded. You'll be called bad, a bad loser. You would be called all manner of names. But we are not afraid. On the contrary, on the contrary, we must speak out. And defeat by error is not a defeat. It's a moral victory. So I want our young people to pay careful attention to everything some of us are saying. We, some of us, are not in politics to become rich. We are not in politics to become famous. But we are in politics to make sure that people have a better quality of life. And it will not happen. It will not happen if you don't defeat an unjust and unfair system. Okay. There's a certain system that has connived to benefit a few and to disadvantage many. Can you this be more is specific? The system Can you be that more specific? Yes. We which, are, which system has connived? What, what exactly are you referring It's an economic to? it's an economic system to start with that we've agreed to. But it's also a system where you must not talk in details about corruption. Okay. Very few get up and name and shame. And in most cases markets they are hounded. They are criticized. They are isolated. They are marginalized. This must stop. And I think it's only that 50% of the population, which is below 25, which I think has the dynamism and the courage to resist. Okay. Well, we'll talk more about it, you know, and uh, your current relationship with the CPP moving forward. But I want to go back a bit to uh, the fact that you didn't get to the opportunity, you know, to experience daddy like everybody does. Okay. And uh, yeah. but you had to travel. I know you, you were in Egypt, yes. and you were invited back, I think, by the Trumpon government That's right. as well. What was those experiences like for you? You know, having to move there and back and still not feel accepted. What was those ex those experiences um, like? Okay. No. Well. That last comment, I don't think, I don't agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, do, you I, felt welcome when you came back? We, f we came back in uh, 75. Yes. But, but let me start with what I was starting to say. When, okay. Uh, okay. You know, when I said that um, our father spoke to us the day of the overthrow. Sure. Hmm? And when it was my turn, he spoke to each and every one of us. When it was my turn, I remember his words because they guide me till today. And he told me, Yaba, as he always called Shadow. me, he told me, Yaba, um, 
don't be afraid. Obviously, it's like he knew naturally that we were terrified because we'd gone through an unusual experience. He said, yeah, but don't be afraid. I don't want you to be afraid. The secret of life is to have no fear. And I've taken these words with me till today. Now, when we returned in 75, we, ov we obviously returned at the invitation of the government of the day. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there was every effort to make us feel comfortable. Um, we were sent, to, we were given a house in Daboni, we were sent to um, Achimota School. So we, we were integrating. It, it, was, it was a series of, you know, the, the, the 78, or was it 17? The 78, then, yeah. yes. Um, I think you went, you went back, you left the country in the 80s. We left the country in the 80s. Sure. You know, they were about, Seriously. you know, the, the PNP, the coup d'etat against sure. the PNP. And so there were a series of upheavals sure. that made our life difficult. Oh. Uh, but initially, um, it was well. And I think our mother made a very courageous decision to decide to bring us back because her family were worried that there would be more overthrows and we'd be embroiled in more, uh, you know, um, difficulties. But mother insisted that she wants us to come back and integrate. This is our country. And thanks to her, because had I not spent some years in Achimota, uh, those formative defining years, if you will, I wouldn't have had the courage to come back and do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a very, very good decision. Yes, we left in the 80s, early 80s, after the, the coup that toppled the uh, PNP government. Sure. Uh, our mother left and yes, I, I decided to, to leave with her. How, how I was different too young to stay alone, I guess. How, how different was living in uh, Egypt like? from what of the course, they're different you had, cultures. You had in yes. Ghana. They're different cultures. We had to learn the language, which that mm. too is, uh, I think it's a great asset today. Uh, we, we grew to know this uh, the beautiful people. Of course, I would say, uh, I mean, my mother's country, in a way, it's my country too. So we, I think we, 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 we integrated very well. We made good friends. And we came to appreciate that, uh, you know, the North Africa, uh, Arab Africa, if you will. And I think it's my, that experience has reinforced my conviction that uh, Osajifu was right. You know, the Sahara must not divide us. That is Africa south of the Sahara from sure. the north, but rather it must bring us together because we have a lot to do with each other. And I'm convinced that if Ghana today um, works more closely with the countries of North Africa, Egypt, um, Algeria, Morocco, all these countries, uh, I think we would, we, we would go far okay. and further. Okay. So when you were reading your father's books, um, did, did you know you, wanted, you would want to do no, politics? Because, you know, not at all. Okay. <laughs> no, obviously because I started active politics at, a, a, let's say, a, a, a mature age. I wasn't young, you know, um, late 40s. So, no, not at all. In fact, I wanted nothing to do with active politics because I was afraid, obviously, okay. of the consequences. Mm. Having uh, experienced the negative side of, you know, um, uh, the family, you know, of a politician. So, no, 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 I wanted nothing to do with politics. But uh, what I read struck me, you know, it's... Uh, it's impossible not to read Kwame Nkrumah without feeling strong, without gaining a sense of uh, the can-do spirit, or that sense of um, 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 understanding, rather, that everything is possible. And indeed, that as black people, we have a responsibility, all of us collectively, to restore our dignity to stop the economic marginalization we've, been, uh, we've suffered from, and to reverse the consequences of slavery and colonialism. You know, there is a healing that has to happen, but it can open, only happen with us. It can't happen with anyone else's intervention. Okay. But I think the black man and woman have a role to play in making humanity a more peaceful and more fair and just world okay. and and this is what Kwame Nkrumah gives you and he gives you the tools of course um, also you know he gives you certain tools because he gives you a certain ideology a certain set of principles that if you apply in decision making if you apply in your um, 
decisions about what economic path to take, you will benefit your country, your okay. community, and your country. Do, 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 do you also share the view, some say, you know, your dad said that you know, the black man is capable of managing his own affairs, and, uh, but we're dependent currently, we're so dependent on you know, foreign aid, uh, I mean, yes. when we are the program. Of course. Because was we, that a mistake? We, yes, of course it was a mistake. We sold out and we abandoned the ideology of freedom. You know, because we, Ghana came into being with a certain set of principles. Otherwise, modern day Ghana probably wouldn't have happened at the time it happened. You know, but there was a certain way of thinking that made modern Ghana happen. You know, and that thinking was championed by Kwame Nkrumah and his colleagues and many Ghanaians who embrace that quest for freedom, decolonization. So, which means that you have to delink yourself from the influence of the colonizer. This is part okay. of becoming a free nation. And you have to look at the continent and work with African countries, planning your development. So you have to plan your economy. But like you're saying, what happened? We abandoned economic planning. We abandoned the seven-year development plan that had we followed today, we would have been an, become an industrialized country like South Korea, which went on to implement about six development plans from the 60s till the late 90s. But what did Ghana do? We abandoned economic planning. And immediately after the illegal overthrow, we went to the IMF and World Bank and said, please, how do we manage our affairs? So that statement you quoted, that brilliant statement by Kwame Nkrumah, was completely destroyed. We did the opposite. And today, today, if we compare that, the hope of those years, free compulsory education, universal education, huh? if we compare that to today, when young people have to beg, and I think this is one of the things that really hurts me today, because every um, person who's active in any field, I mean, would know the number of people who come to you, young people coming to you, okay. begging you to help them with their education. Otherwise, they have to stop. So okay. people don't, our people are not reaching their full potential right. because we've made bad economic decisions. Okay. Well, fast forward to now and uh, your political uh, interest, uh, because I mean, obviously what your father told you when you were younger has sort of sparked a certain fire in you that you're on that trajectory. So what is your current relationship like with the CPP? I am totally committed to an Nkrumah CPP. What does that mean? It means a CPP that follows Kwame Nkrumah's policies, Kwame Nkrumah's ideas. Because this is why we say we are CPP. We are CPP because of a certain ideology. Okay. You know, we are not interested in taking the name CPP or using the name Nkrumah and practicing or promoting policies that have nothing to do with Nkrumah's decolonization is, agenda. Is CPP promoting Nkrumah's ideas? Now, many of us, like myself, and I'm CPP, and I'm promoting Kwame Nkrumah's ideas. So who is not? Who is in the CPP that's not promoting Nkrumah's ideas? I don't, I don't want to comment on that. Okay. I don't want to comment on that, and I'm not interested. I'm interested in making sure that I strengthen in the years to come, the Nkrumahist line within the CPP. I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very interested in making sure that our party, our party continues to promote many of the policies that when I was chairman, I pushed forward. Okay. As for example, our total opposition to the pass passage uh, or the it hasn't passed yet, thank sure, God. Sure. The Plant Breeders Bill, okay. which is a bill that will give foreign breeders great advantage at the expense or even monopoly, it could facilitate a monopoly of breeders of seeds at the expense of our farmers who should always be the first breeders okay. and who should always have the first rights. I want our party to champion a seed law that will protect our farmers' rights and that will make sure that it is suited to our conditions and our environment. Okay. We also, I want my party to continue to champion our anti-genetically modified organisms. 
campaign. Yeah, you, you know, you yes, GMO, yes, we are very much against it, okay. and we've given all our reasons, and we want people in Ghana to even understand more and more why we have to fight it because we, it would we, sneak we would, on us. Okay. We, we would do that, but I, I want to, I spoke to him, Prof uh, Delhi uh, Mode, uh, and uh, he said that. Um, when I, on the 50th anniversary of the overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, and he said that he, they would reach out to anyone who is disaffectioned, feels you know, a certain rift uh, after the elections. And I want to ask you, have they reached out to you? No, no, they have not. Okay. They have not, but this is not a problem for us. I am hoping to get the seat back for the CPP. Uh, and I so are you working on your own? Are you, do you have the support of the party? Because, I mean, you need the chairman of the party and the flag bearer of the party. All of that, you're a team. You, you speak of a certain ideal. You speak of a certain uh, vision. You're a CPP. But a you're lot a of, team. A lot I, of people support me. But not the chairman, not the presidential candidates. No. They, what did they tell you? Don't, don't ask me what you need to ask them. I think you should ask them those questions. I'm asking All what you, I know. Have they, they've, so they've not reached out. So everything you're doing is on your own. I mean, that's what you can answer for yourself. You know, I've done several interviews. And after the interview, okay. hell let loose. So I beg you, let us not. I don't. I thought this was a personality. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, media, of it. It's the, me, of it. the media has a way sometimes <laughs> of focusing on the negatives and blowing things out of all proportion. And I would beg you. I know it's your job, and you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> but I don't want to, to answer questions no. about all these matters. Okay. I am going to speak and speak so clearly after the 7th of November. Okay. So but I promise you, you can call me after the 7th, <laughs> and I'll give you all the information. But, but, but uh, for now, sure. let me assure you that our campaign for Jumoro is going very well. I haven't even started properly. I'm just going back to the people telling them, Hey, here I am. I would want like to serve you as I did okay, okay. between but 2009 yes. and 2010. Okay. Here is a question I'm hoping that you'll be able to answer. There are a lot of people who say that, look, uh, you put women in position, but then they do not have authority. Did you have authority as chair? Did you have authority? Okay, I can try and explain a few things, and then maybe you can judge. Sure, sure, sure. You see, in every party, they are different lines, if you like. Sure. Um, it doesn't mean you are enemies as such, but it means you have different priorities, right? So when I was chairman, indeed, I was elected chairman end of 2011. Sure. Hmm? But of course, I had certain challenges huh? in that um, I would say most of the other members of leadership did not see eye to eye with me. Okay. And this made sometimes decision making a bit difficult. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was pushing for us and I initiated various projects like our electronic database, okay. which I wanted, you know, I wanted us to conclude. Uh, unfortunately, because I was almost the only one championing it, it was difficult and it took longer. I'm hoping that in time our party will do so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, this is just one example. Um, so it's not a question of woman or man, but it's, you know, some of us um, are very passionate about the legacy of Kwame Nkrumah. Okay. And we are trying to make sure that it's a priority for the party that claims to hold his ideology to follow it faithfully. Others might not agree, you know, others might not agree. Many are not even in the party to agree or disagree, but they obviously, not everybody agrees with that. But this is one of the challenges I had. So I, I know that women leaders do have problems because I've been a woman leader in various capacities, even by being a member of parliament, <laughs> yes. or let's say leading oh, yes, a constituency, yes. or leading a constituency. You know, we are, and it's simply because we are fewer in number. I mean, that's the main, the main reason why we might appear weaker is because we are fewer. And that is why many of us uh, want to see and want to work towards greater uh, representation mm. and I know politics has acquired a dirty name <laughs> I know a lot of 
excellent, competent women are afraid. They do, I mean, who wants to be insulted? Look at how I've been insulted. But who wants to go through that? But I want to tell our women not to be afraid because you need pioneers. You need some who can take that, you know. You can take that, those uh, insults. You can take the hounding. You can take the attacks. But you can be sure that we bring in something fresh. At the very least, many of us have not been in, um, involved in politics for a very long time. So we are coming with freshness, you know, with, uh, let's say, we are coming with, um, with, you know, the experience of common sense, if I may say so. And common sense and honesty and sincerity are the most important things in politics. Do you think people are ready to listen to the truth? Does the, the truth something can make people uncomfortable? Absolutely. It, they, and indeed, and this is one of the challenges, but you have to be, you have to be a, a pioneer. You see, people, it will make people uncomfortable, but in time, people are going to understand and in time the effects of truth will be you know will be uh, greater benefit to the um, society at large so okay. yes so we have to be strong okay. especially women <laughs> especially you know young people we have to be very strong okay quick quick questions this one is a q and a quick one Sam. no problem um are you a social media person Yes, when I have the time, but sometimes when we're on the ground moving around, we, we don't know. Twitter or Facebook? Both, 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 I'm afraid, yes, but I don't, all, I must confess, I don't always have the time, but I try, I okay. try as much. And when as you're I not do. going to the constituency you love, interacting with people, what are you doing? To unwind, to when oh, do you have yeah. a moment, the Samia moment to say, Yes, this I have is good friends, time. I love to eat, <laughs> I have good friends, oh. I pray, I meditate, so I. There's, there's a lot to do. But, but we are on a mission. You see, we are on a mission. So, and when you dedicate your life to a certain mission, the realization of a certain objective, then it somehow consumes you, but not in a negative sense. Not in a negative sense. But for a few years of your life, this is your priority. And I'm happy, um, you know, that my friends and my family uh, support that. Okay. I want to leave a legacy for my son, Kwame. You know, I want to. legacy? I want my son, my nieces, nephews to feel that same pride that we feel when we think of our father. He sacrificed, he even suffered from a human point of view, you can see, sure. but he uh, left us many things we cannot forget to the extent that some of us are ready to die for the realization of his objectives. Okay. I think. A lot of us need to inspire many young people who will come after us okay. to take what, their mantle. Okay. What have you put in place since you're interested? You say you're absolutely interested in the John Morris seat. What have you put in place to avoid, as quote, defeat by error? We are, we are, um, we are in the process of doing that. Uh, we need to be very careful with our polling agents. And we need to be very um, smart with the intelligence on the ground. Uh, uh, because we know, of course, there will be an attempt to try and replicate. But I think, you know, one's bitten. I think we, I <laughs> so think we sure. Yes. So I think we will, with the uh, hindsight and of experience, I think we are going to put in certain many measures to, to, to avoid that. And, and you know, the, uh, the will of the people is even stronger, I think this time round because they can compare my achievements from 2009 to 2012 with the achievements of the MP who came after me. Okay. I think there's, uh, there's absolutely no comparison. And that is what I meant by the truth shines. Okay. Then um, you are a CPP, you are enchromized, right? And uh, you talk about bring, bringing truth and freshness. Just a quick one. Uh, some say Ivor Green Street also brings the same freshness to the CPP. Do you think that some say he can push the 2016 election to the second one? Can he do that? I don't know what the second round will do for Kwame Nkrumah's ideas and policies. I don't know. So I, what? What we want to see is Kwame Nkrumah's ideas modernized to serve the people of Ghana. I don't know what the second round will do. I, I, 
So what do you want to see happen to the CPP before we go? So what do you want? I if it want would not, to it would not make any impact. So it's not just I a question. Of no. Who said? So why are we doing what we are doing? No. Why asking, am I trying the to second, get it? the second uh, round? Yes, I don't understand how that will bring us closer to Kwame Nkrumah's mind. That is that second round okay. theory. What I would like us to see is to have greater and more progressive representation in Parliament. I think Parliament needs a different force to come in and somehow regulate you know, uh, every kind of activity there. I think there are voices missing. There's a voice, the Nkrumah's voice is solely missing All right. in Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Samia Nkrumah. Uh, she is uh, determined to wrestle that Jomoro seat and uh, champion the ideals of Dr. Kwame.